Welcome to Grain Glamping. This is my fully off the grid glamp site that I own in conjunction with two different partners. I've got two bell tents. I've got a Dorito in my mouth. Doritos! And I have a 700 square foot Mongolian hut back here, also known as a yurt. And I have an Airstream back there and an A-frame. The really cool thing about these is they are off the grid, so you are definitely roughing it, you know, a little bit, but at the same time, we still offer amenities like, you know, minor solar power. We also offer a cast iron stove so that you can cozy up to a nice fire. And the greatest amenity of all, all the stars in the sky that we don't charge you for. So you get it all at Grand Glamping. Let's head inside of the Mahal. And I'm gonna give you a quick tour of what that one looks like. That one, um, much more expensive, way more effort to put together, but the ROI on that typically tends to be two to three times more than our bell tent. So it was worth the effort, but there are definitely a lot of moving parts with it. And as we step inside, you're gonna see that significantly larger, way more furnishings that kind of come along with that too. So I hope you're excited because I'm excited to show you it. So hopefully one day you can come stay at it and enjoy it for yourself. But for now, we're gonna head inside, let's go. All right, we're here at on the outside of my Mongolian hut, also known as a yurt. Let's step inside, let's take a look at this beauty. 700 square feet, it's 30 feet across. If we do run the quick calculations on that, I think it's 3.14 times uh, the radius squared. It's about 700 square feet. Let's just go inside, don't check the math on that. inside what we call the Mahal, the Mahal yurt, because it is really quite majestic, really quite beautiful in here. As I said earlier, it's 30 feet across. So from side to side, I feel like it's very spacious. We have three different full-size beds here. And again, we are glamping, so every single bed is a full-size memory foam mattress because we extra like that. We got one, two, three, all in all to put something like this together just to build, to buy the yurt and kind of get the operation up and running about $35,000. And then for the actual furnishing itself was about $10,000. So you know, we spend a lot of money on a bunch of little things, right? An absorbent amount of throw pillows. Is that the correct use of that term? Lots of throw pillows. We've got throw blankets. We've got lots of shelves with knickknacks. Whoop, just gonna go ahead and fix this little guy right here. Knicks, knickknacks galore. <laughs> and, uh, I went to Goodwill. I don't know if people like to read on vacation, but if they do, I bought a bunch of books. Funny thing about all these books is it's like Twilight, Eclipse, New Moon. But you know, we're really trying to appeal to the masses here. And then we've got our big chest right here. Inside of here, we have like a bunch of different extra, um, blankets and uh, pillows and throw pillows and all that kind of stuff. And then again, we have like makeup towels in here just because if you put out a lot of white towels, uh, oh, if we put out, oh man, okay, just give me a second. If you put a bunch of white towels out and people are washing off their makeup, tends to stain them. So we have makeup towels specifically for that. And then we always have little notes like these are not for dishes. We've got toilet paper, compost, compostable, compostable, biodegradable, <laughs> there we go. Biodegradable so that we can compost our waste afterwards. And then as you can see, one one theme that has carried throughout the entire yurt is we've got vines just kind of all in and, in and out of the different lattice within. And then of course, one of the main, I don't know, I don't, I don't wanna say it's our brand, but one thing that I really like in terms of vibe is getting nothing but string lights all around the perimeter here. Let me just plug this in really fast. Show you what it looks like. Uh, again, for me, it's all about the vibe. So I feel like there's definitely a vibe that comes along with having string lights like this, especially at night. I think I said this about the bell, but it also applies for the Mahal is that when it's nighttime outside and it's pitch black outside, you got the stars, you got the moon, but it's so cool to see like a yurt and a bell tent completely illuminated from the inside and you see all the lights kind of spilling out from the windows. That to me really creates quite the picturesque, Instagrammable moment to take a photo at night and really kind of post about it on your Instagram and brag to all of your friends. Up here we got our skylight, so this is really cool. Um, if it's ever super moony outside, <laughs> which is the opposite of sunny, I imagine, uh, lots of moonlight will spill out from in here. This is really just such a striking space. I mean, we have lattice all inside and then we have two by four 
core that is basically like pine or cedar. And then we have all of our rafters right up here. And then as you can see, all of the rafters are kind of connected by this cable railing up here. So this all adds to the structural integrity. This yurt is like mega engineered to withstand all of the elements. You know, when, when it snows super heavily, the bells can, the roofs can start caving in a little bit if you're not wiping off the snow. But something like this is totally equipped to basically handle like any form of snow. I don't want to say any, but for the most part, from what we've experienced, like any snow load is usually pretty okay on, on something like this. And that's just because, I mean, literally, it's not really, I mean, it's almost like a house, right? You have all of your studs and then we have like canvas on the inside, we have insulation, and then we have canvas on the outside. So it's super, super insulated in here. And then obviously there's a bunch of different little nooks in here, right? So we've got kind of our standing closet over here with oak hangers. Cause again, we bougie. And then our little fig tree, you know, it's, it's such a, it, you know, we have so many plants in here that it takes a lot of time. We actually hire a botanist to come and make sure that they're well kept and they're staying alive. No, I'm just kidding, they're fake. Uh, we have our hand sanitizer station. We have a mirror for all the vain folk like myself. How's my hair looking, by the way? I haven't showered in a couple days, so it's all good. It's glamping, it's fine. We got our cactus here, 100% real, don't touch it. Uh, don't smell it, don't lick it, or else you'll cut yourself. And then we have more real plants that <laughs> I've placed throughout the entire yurt. And then we have our little cozy spot right here. So these are actually memory foam mattresses that fold out. They can be pushed together if it's couple or singles. So basically we can basic, <laughs> basically we can basically sleep eight people in here. Hmm. Uh, we can sleep eight people in here, two people in each bed, and then two on the floor. And then we have our little table here for eating, having breakfast. We have our poops here, and then we have extra stools just kind of everywhere, right? So, you know, when a space like this, you want to give people a, a place to sit down. So we've got one, two, three, and four. And that proves that I can count. And then we have extra chairs right here. We, we have one outside as well. We have a partition if anybody wants to like change inside of here. And, you know, there's eight people in here. Obviously, a little privacy is needed. They can throw this up change and then we have kind of like these japanese style floor cushions that's what they're called right uh, and that's it that is the tour oh actually let's it's not it i lied let's go one, okay just one right over here we have our kitchen area a kitchenette right so we have all of our plates we have a a walk even wow it's impressive i didn't even know we had that in there we've got all of our cutlery cups we've got champagne glasses, uh, mugs, plates. Uh, we have a Brita here for fresh water, knives in case you need to, you know, kill somebody. We have a fridge here stocked with Corona, Corona, Corona. And then we have our camper stove here. In terms of cooking, we keep it very, very simple. Uh, this is powered by propane. A lot of people come here, they cook eggs, hash browns, human meat, whatever they've got, you know, available to them at the time. French press, coffee, and then additional things like a white opener, a can opener, lighter. And then very lastly, we've got our cast iron stove right here, which is great. This thing, this again, I think I said this for the other one, this is rated for a 1500 square foot space that's insulated. So in the bell tent, it actually, it heats it up very well, but in a space like this, that's actually completely insulated like there is real insulation be between this this thing will warm up this place like that I mean we we've made a fire in here the other day I did it it was my first fire I ever made we'll show the story right here very proud of that fire but it really kept the entire yurt warm the entire night in fact the the yurt was a little too warm it stayed very warm the entire night whereas if we didn't have it going it actually would have been really cold in here so this thing works really well lastly just one little finishing touch here that I, that I forgot to mention. We have this telescope, something that I decided to add here like maybe six months ago. And this has made an appearance in the reviews. People talk about this in our reviews all the time. Parents will say in the reviews how, you know, they got to watch the night sky and look at the stars and look at the moon with their kid for their first time in a telescope. So really that kind of stuff is just super warming to me. But yeah, I think that's basically it. Um, I think if you do just a quick pan here, you'll see that we really thought about this space. I mean, there are so many little nooks and crannies to kind of hang out in, uh, to kind of enjoy your space with your friends and your family. And that's what glamping is all about. Look, you're not getting AC. You're not getting like central HVAC or anything like that. You're not necessarily getting city waters so that you can always take a shower. We actually do offer showers here, but seasonally. But I would say this is a very big step up from camping in a vinyl tent, right? And people are willing to pay for something like this. We charge for something like this anywhere from $259 to $359 a night. And for the most part, in our peak seasons, we are 100% booked. So that concludes the tour of the Mahal. If you have any questions about how this operation runs, leave me a comment down below or sign up for my newsletter on rawbuilt.co. I will leave a link down in the description below and I'll keep you updated as I continue to put out more glamping units and you know for the release of my course that teaches you basically how to not assemble this but how to run the operation behind the Mahal.